Right, uh, I'll kick off. Right. Saul was one of the witnesses, and he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the region of Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning. But Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them out into prison. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits was, were cast out, screaming as they left their victims. And many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. A man named Simon had been a scorcerer there for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke of him as the Great One, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astonished them with his magic. But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began to follow Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great mir miracles Philip performed. When the apostle in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for those new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon the believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given when the apostle laid their hands on people, he offered them money to buy his power. Let me have this power too, he explained. He exclaimed it. So that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, May your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. <laughs> you can have no part in this, for your heart is not right with God. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive your evil thoughts. For I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon exclaimed, that these terrible Things you've said won't happen to me. After testifying and preaching the word of Lord in Samaria, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem. 
and they stopped in many Samaritan village along the way to preach the good news. As for Philip, an angel of the an angel of the Lord said to him, "Go south, down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza." So he started out, and he met Trishera of Ethiopia and a eunuch of good of great authority under the Kandak, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch have gone to Jerusalem to worship. And he was now returning, seated in his carriage. He was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, "Go over and walk along beside the carriage." Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, "Do you understand what you are reading?" The man replied. How can how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage were the passage of scripture he had been reading was this: He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The Enoch asked Philip, "Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else?" So, beginning with the same scripture. Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the Enoch said, "Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized?" He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of water, the spirit of the law snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way, rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north, at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to. Caesarea. Yep. Yep. Cool. Um. So I'm gonna share what I have learned. I'll I'll pick verse twenty nine. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, "Go over and walk along beside the carriage." Um. So here it says the Holy Spirit. Something inside Philip talks to him. As if、um, a voice inside his head tell him what to do,、um, and I would say, for normal people, they have a very similar experience、um, called gut feeling, right?、Um, and I think in most of the time, we need to believe in the gut feeling.、Um, Because as we grow up more, as we have experienced、uh, more, have more life experience, we started to build up this gut feeling. Or if if as a Christian you have、uh, Holy Spirit that will tell you whether it's good or not, you should do it or not.、Um, just like I talked to this person two days ago.、Um, So I was basically talking about、um, 
what I have gone through, the people that I have come across, which people should I pick to become friends? And he said, um, do you sometimes feel when you talk to someone for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you, you know whether he can or she can be your friend in long term or not? I said, yeah, sometime. And he said to me, that's your gut feeling. Um, and I, I think in this case, it's the Holy Spirit. Um, like how Holy Spirit tell Philip to do what he's supposed to do. And Philip trust the feeling. And he, he did quite a di- good job with it, actually. So that's what I learned, to, to, to trust the inner voice. Right. Yeah, that's good, man. So the Holy, the Holy Spirit for us as a Christian, we can, we can understand that the, it, it is not it, but He is like a person that talks to us when we, when we are listening to Him, to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so if I, if I do a comparison be, between Holy Spirit and God's feelings, I think God's feelings will show us things just when we are in certain situations but the holy spirit can talk to us anytime even when we are sleeping the holy spirit can be talking to us does it make sense yeah yeah so for me So well, I'll use the verses 31st. Where it says, the man replied, how can I, unless someone instructs me? How can I, unless someone in, instructs me? So for me, it, it shows that uh, Many times we, we don't we don't know what to do in our lives. There are many many circumstances that we don't really know what to do. If you have if you need to go forwards or backwards, if you need to walk one mile or ten miles. So and with the help of the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit is this person who can instruct us tell us what to do or not i think it's the same it's the same of what you are saying about the gut the gut feelings so and here the philip philip says that so he he was looking for someone to give him the knowledge to tell him what that passage was about and for us we we should ask the Holy Spirit to tell us as well what to do to instruct us what is the, the right way that we have to walk what is the, the, the right path mm. that's good so what you're saying is um, you you use the Holy Spirit as a lead to instruct you what to do yeah yeah like this yeah good what do i do for this week Mm, i guess for me this week is to rethink about whether should i keep pursuing the app idea um reevaluate it um also listen to the gut uh, the whole the Holy Spirit to to decide whether should I keep going on this or not. I have I have done something. Um, there's something done in this project. I think it's about fifty to sixty percent. Um, it just needs a little bit extra work and make it publish. So I have a rethink about it to whether uh, whether this idea is worth to pursue or not. Right, good man, good. I, I'm pretty sure that 
the Holy Spirit will give you what you what the Holy Spirit will tell you what you need to to listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe on that. So for me, I yeah, I'll I'll ask more advices to the Holy Spirit to be sure what I have to do because I have many ideas about my project and so but I can't do everything at the same time so I have to choose one by one so and I, mm -hmm. I want the Holy Spirit to to give me so to show me which one I, I should keep doing which one I, I have to to choose to to move forward yep good actually I'm gonna write down what I just said in case I forget 